Hello, hello, hello. I am the Lennox Mitch. Oh, it's been a quite a while since I released a video. Today is Wednesday, and the last time I published a video was last Friday. So, I've been using Arch Linux for two years, and, you know, other YouTubers that I watch, Linux YouTubers, say one of the reasons why they don't like Arch Linux is that they got bit by it. You know, they went and did an, a major update and it broke their system. Or they did an update and one of the apps that they used had a major update and was so changed they had to relearn how to use the application. Or they did an update and an app broke and stopped working. And those people claim that they like to use a Debian-based system because things don't change. I mean, eventually Debian does updates. Of course, they do their security updates, but eventually the apps get updated, but not so fast. And things just work. So, like I said, I've been using Arch Linux for two years, and I never had a problem. I never had an update that broke the system. I never had an update that changed an app so much that, oh, I have to relearn this app and I don't want to use it. Or it's hard to relearn it. That never happened to me. And I never had an update that broke an app until the summertime. So I use uh, this app called Remina. It's in the official Arch Linux repository and it's available in most distributions. And it works along with free RDP and they work together and it's a re remote desktop client. So with this app from home, from my Linux system, I can log into our windows server at work and have access to all my files, all my applications, and I can even print to two of our printers at work that are on the network. And it's fantastic. And I liked having it because not that I do work from home, but I like the ability to be able to log into work, especially in case something happens, in case something happens, well, where the city gets shut down or whatever, and I have to work from home. I like the knowing that I could log into work from home, even though I'm using Linux, Arch Linux. So, like I said, I installed these apps and they were working. Everything was fine. Then in the summertime, after an update, it stopped working. So I was able to reverse the update for this and not free D. It wasn't free RDP. It was Remina. I was able to reverse the update for Remina and it started working again. And I even did a video about it on how to reverse an app. And it was working again for a month or so. And all of a sudden it stopped working last week. And so I did a, re you know, I played around with it. I, re I reversed the update for this app. It didn't fix it. I reversed the update for free RDP and that didn't fix it. And I tried playing around and reversing different updates, you know, updates from different periods or older versions from different periods for both these apps and I couldn't get it working. Then I did a full reverse update. I reversed all the apps from a week and a half ago. Now in a Debian system, that wouldn't be a lot, but in Arch Linux, I think I reversed 80 files or 80 applications. And when I re reversed all of them, it worked. Remina started working again and I was able to log into the system at work. So I thought, but I can't have a week and a half of 80 updates being reversed and I can't set my Pac-Man config to stop updating everything because you need your security updates. You need your uh, kernel to be updated. You need your web browser to be updated with its security updates and so forth. It's one thing to set one application to not update anymore 
and to use an older version, but you can't tell your whole system not to do updates. And I don't know what where the conflict is and what's causing it to not work. I just know that when I reversed all the updates, 80 of them or so from a week and a half ago, it started working again. So I thought, well, I have an extra computer that I'm not using. And this computer has um, a terabyte hard drive, four processors, and eight gigs of RAM. And I have Arch Linux in it, but it's off most of the time. And then when I do turn it on after a month, I got a huge update to do. I thought, why don't I put a Debian-based system in there and keep it off? And then when I do turn it on once in a while, the updates will be much smaller. And it will be using an older version of Remina and free RDP. And I forgot to mention that in my virtual machine, when I logged into Pure Debian, Linux Mint Debian, and Antex Linux, Ramina was working and I was able to log into the cloud system. And I thought, maybe that's the key. I have an extra computer. Let's put a Debian-based system in it. And I don't have to worry about huge updates. I don't have to worry about conflicts or using a newer version of Ramina. So this is my question. I know that Pure Debian works with Ramina and I'm able to log into my uh, system at work. Should I use Pure Debian? Now, this is a virtual machine of Pure Debian. And if I go into HTOP, it's running pretty high. Uh, the Debian installer automatically did one gig of swap, which is not bad. Now, normally I don't use swap, but hey, I don't care about one gig of swap. It's not like a waste, you know, this the hard drive that I'm going to be uh, installing a Debian-based system on has a terabyte. So when you have a terabyte, who cares about one gig of swap? But personally, I don't think swap is needed. But like I said, I don't care about a gig of swap. So it's running kind of high. But uh, and Debian, Pure Debian has some older packages. And it's harder to get Brave Browser and some other packages into it. But it works. So my question is, should I use Debian? And I'm just going to log out of the um, Cinnamon desktop. Because I want to do a fair comparison. And let's log into... So this is pure Debian. Let's log into um, the awesome window manager. Let's put my password in. So now I'm in the awesome window manager, but I'm in Debian. Let's call up HTOP. So it's running at 520 megabytes of RAM. That's not bad. So now I'm going to close it. And this is Debian. And just to show you that I am in pure Debian, let's do um, NeoFetch. So this is Debian 12. So now I'm in Linux Mint Debian or LMDE6. And let's log out. And we're going to log into the awesome window manager because that's where I spend most of my time. So let's go into awesome. Let's put my password in. Let's do each top. So this is running a bit lower than um, Debian, pure Debian. But one thing I don't like about Linux Mint LMDE is that it matches your RAM. So when you're doing the installation, if you have uh, four gigs of RAM, it's going to give you a four gig of swap. If you have eight gigs of RAM, it's going to give you eight gigs of swap. And the same thing would go if you have, uh, let's say you have 32 gigs of RAM, you have a nice beefy computer, or you have 64 gigs of RAM. 
the installer is going to match it. So the installer is going to give you 32 gigs of swap or 64 gigs of swap. Like, really, that's unnecessary. I don't know. And that's the one thing I don't like about Linux Mint Debian. I think it's a great distribution. I've done many videos about it. I love it. I think it's great. But they really should fix the Calamari's installer. Now, there's other distributions where the Calamari's installer gives you a pull-down menu and you can make the choice whether to do swap or not and you can say no but i just wish the linux mint team would put that on there because to match your ram it's a waste so for instance if i put linux mint debian in my computer that computer has eight gigs of ram it's going to put an eight gig swap now i have a terabyte hard drive so probably shouldn't make a big deal about it but it's just one thing i don't like now, the, on the positive side of Linux Mint Debian, they have a great software center. They have easy access to Flatpak and a lot of apps. Let's just do a NeoFetch. And of course, you can see I'm in LMDE 6. Or should I install Antex Linux into my bare metal computer, my extra computer, based on Debian? I also know from going into my virtual machines that Remina works and I'm able to log into our cloud system at work. And Antex Linux is very light. Let's just turn on the conky. Let's go to uh, desktop. And I have it programmed so that when I boot into Antex, the conky doesn't go on because I don't particularly like the conky. But let's just turn it on for the video. And look at we're running at 284 megabytes of RAM. That's fantastic. 284 megabytes of RAM. Now, Antex Linux put automatically gave me two gigs of swap. And I can live with two gigs. But it's very light. Now let's log out of here. Oh, and one of the beautiful things about Antex is that you can switch between window managers without having to log out and put your password back in. So let's log into Awesome. Now it doesn't come installed with the Awesome. I installed the Awesome myself. But let's log into it. Other desktops, let's go into Awesome. So now we're in the Awesome Window Manager. Let's go to HTOP. Look at this. We're running at 250 megabytes of RAM. It's fantastic. And with Antex Linux, you have the ability to install the Brave browser alongside Firefox and you have more access with Antex you have more access to apps better access to more apps than you do in pure Debian it's a fast install and it's a fantastic system now there's only one thing I don't like about Antex and that is it doesn't use systemd now now it uses sysvinet now I really don't know anything about these systems, so I can't really say whether systemd or sysvinet or runit or any of the other systems, which one is the best one, because I don't know. The only thing that I do know is that for most of my time in Linux, I pretty much all of my time in Linux, except for a little bit, I've always used systemd. Not because I chose it, but just because most of the distributions that I've used have systemd in it, and I know how to use systemd. If I switch to Antex, I'm going to have to learn the terminal commands for doing things I want to do because uh, Antex had, doesn't run systemd, it has uh, sysvinet. So that's the downside. But other than that, it's a fantastic program. So I have an extra computer that is off most of the time, and I'd like to keep it and use it in case I need to log into the cloud system at work, at the office. And I like to have a Debian-based system in there because number one, Ramina, the app that I use to log into our system at work, still works properly in the Debian-based system and it's not working in Arch. And I also would like to have a Debian-based system in this computer because it's off a lot. And I don't want to have to do big, huge updates. So my question to you is, should I put pure Debian in? 
Linux Mint Debian, LMDEN, or Antex Linux? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.